Hey there Space Cats! Now, how are you doing? Really? I'd have never have guessed. Down to business. This week I am making a picture for the interior of a book. It's just practice because I want to show you my process. The story is called The Magic Porridge Pot. You might have seen some of the other fairy tales that I've illustrated this year. There's Dick Whittington, The Three Billy Goats Gruff, Princess and the Pea, Thumbelina, Peter Pan and lots of others. I'll put a link to the playlist up in the top corner. I've decided to do a vignette for this illustration so I'm not expecting to have any text running through it. The text would either go under the image or on the facing page. I've used my dip pen and acrylic black ink to draw and, crucially, made sure I left it for a good couple of hours to dry. Otherwise, when I rub out the pencil marks or start to put watercolour down, it can bleed or smudge. And frankly, that just makes for a bad rest of the day. The colour is watercolour paint. If you don't know the story, then this is how it goes. I just want to say a massive thanks to my friend Sue from But That's Another Story who tells a fantastic version of this story and I was really inspired by her to do this illustration. By the way, I might have made it a bit Julesified, so don't worry if it's slightly different to the version that you know. Once there was a little girl who lived with her mother. They were very poor since the girl's father had died from being bitten by a heifer lump. Every day, mother gathered herbs and mushrooms for them to eat, but they were both always very hungry. She sent the little girl out to the woodland to find more dandelions. The little girl, let's call her Hazel. Hazel's tummy was rumbling so loudly that it sounded like a velociraptor. And she couldn't find a single dandelion. She sat down on a tree stump, head in hands. <sighs> What's the matter? asked a voice. Hazel looked up. The voice belonged to an old lady dressed in black with a grey shawl over her shoulders. Hazel was surprised to see anyone, but this lady looked quite friendly, so she wasn't scared. I'm so hungry, she said. I haven't eaten anything since the day before yesterday. Oh dear, said the kindly looking woman. That is no good. Here, would you like some porridge? Oh, just about more than anything, said Hazel. The old lady pulled out a blackened cauldron from her bag. It's magic, she said, putting her finger to her lips. Shh! She laid it on the ground. Just the bare ground. There were no sticks or fire. Pot! Cook, she ordered. And the pot started to fill with porridge. Steam was wisping from the top and the sweet smell of milk and porridge was just about more than Hazel could manage. The porridge rose to the top of the cauldron. Pot, enough, the lady said and the pot stopped producing porridge. She pulled out a dulled and scratched silver spoon and gave it to Hazel, who ate the porridge ravenously in great gulps. The porridge was sweet and gooey, like custard and marshmallows. 
She could only eat half of the bowl before she was full. Gosh, that was the best porridge I've ever tasted, said Hazel. Then why don't you let me gift the magic porridge pot to you? I am an old woman and I don't need it any more. Just make sure you know the magic words. Right, said Hazel. Pot cook and pot enough. Correct, said the old lady. And then she was gone into the thicket of silver birch trees. Hazel took the pot home. Hey, mother, look at this. She took the pot out. Pot cook. And just as before, the pot started to fill with creamy porridge. It rose to the edge of the cauldron and she commanded, Pot, enough! And it stopped. Mother was amazed and quickly dug into the porridge. It was so delicious. She couldn't remember the last time she'd eaten anything so filling and so nutritious. For the next few days, they ate whenever they felt like it and started to feel more like their old selves before father and the heifer lump incident. Hazel decided to go for a walk, so she waved to her mother and stepped outside into the fresh spring morning. <sighs> ah. Mother, although she'd had breakfast, porridge of course, was feeling a bit peckish. I shall have some porridge, she decided. Pot cook, she said, and the pot started to bubble away. Up rose the mixture to the rim of the cauldron. Pot stop, mother commanded. But the pot didn't stop. It was the wrong magic word. The porridge started to spill over the sides of the cauldron and down onto the wooden floor. Uh, pot, stop! called Mother again. But it didn't. Stop! Pot! shouted Mother. But it was the wrong words. The porridge flowed over her feet and the kitchen floor. Pot! Just stop it! Stop making porridge now! She yelled, quite frightened. But the pot didn't, and now the porridge was at the door, trying to escape underneath it, and finally pushing it open. Pot, cease! Finish! Conclude your porridge making! Pot, terminate! Halt! Please come to a standstill! But the pot didn't. The kitchen floor was flooded with porridge and it was now flowing down the street. Villagers came out of their doors to see what the commotion was all about and they were almost swept off their feet in a tidal wave of oats and milk and sugar. It was at this moment that Hazel returned from her walk. She was horrified to see the mess that had become of her village and even more alarmed to see the source of it was her own house. At once, she knew what must have happened. She cupped her hands to her mouth and shouted, Pot! Enough! Immediately, the pot stopped regurgitating its sticky fare and the appalling river of porridge started to subside. Well, I guess the message in that story is don't mess with other people's stuff and don't be greedy and make sure you share with others. Well, I guess there's a lot of messages in here. If you can think of one that I haven't mentioned, maybe you could put it in the comments. Next week, I'll be looking at how much you should be selling your book for. Until then, I'm off to make myself some porridge. Uh, actually, no, wait, I think I'll make that toast. I will see you next week. Nanu Nanu. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. 
There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go!